A water nozzle is to be attached to a vertical pipe as shown in the figure below. The engineer designing the piping system needs to know the force exerted on the coupling by the nozzle, including the weight of the nozzle itself and the force of the water pressure, so that it can be designed effectively. The nozzle inlet diameter is 3 inches, the outlet diameter is 1 inch, the static pressure at the inlet is 19.2 psig, the weight of the empty nozzle, which is fabricated out of stainless steel, is 10 pounds, and it has an internal volume of 150 cubic inches. Determine the horizontal and vertical forces acting on the coupling by the nozzle, being sure to indicate direction. So let's start with our assumptions. First up, we have incompressible flow. Then steady state. And I'm assuming all of our velocities are uniform velocities. That's an average velocity. Uniform flow at one and two. And I'm going to be neglecting any body forces in the x direction. And then let's assume that the water is at standard temperature and pressure, for which the density is 1.937. And that value comes from table A1. At standard temperature and pressure, which is 1 atmosphere and 68 degrees Celsius for pressure and temperature respectively, 137 is our density for water. Next up, do I care about the x direction or the y direction? The answer is yes, I care about both actually. I have to perform a conservation of momentum in the x direction to determine the x force and a conservation of momentum in the y direction to determine the y force. I can do them independently, I just have to do both. So let's start with the x direction. And this should be becoming old hat, so I will go through it a little bit more quickly. For surface forces, I have our reaction force, which I'm drawing as Rx into the right direction, so I'm going to plug that in here as a positive value. I have a gauge pressure at state one, but the surface force exerted by that gauge pressure appears in the y direction. Therefore, I don't have a surface force exerted by that pressure in the x direction. Okay. Then there are no body forces, because I've neglected any body forces in the x direction, because the only body force we're considering is gravitational acceleration. Then I have steady state, which means this entire term is also zero. And I have one opportunity for water to cross the boundary in the x direction, and that is state two. So my control surface integral is going to be the integral across state 2 of density 2, u2 times velocity vector 2 times dA2. So Rx is equal to rho 2 comes out of the integral, u2 comes out of the integral, and I've assumed uniform flow, so the integral of velocity vector 2 with respect to a2 is going to collapse down to magnitudes of average velocity times area 2 and you know what's coming. Is that a positive or negative value? Well, our velocity vector and area vector are in the same direction, which means that it's going to be a positive value. Then I'm going to try to rewrite u2 in terms of average velocity 2, and for that I recognize that I have an x component of velocity here that I can describe by using a cosine so cosine of 30 degrees is equal to, that is the proportion u2 over v bar 2. Therefore, I'm writing u2 as v bar 2 times cosine of 30 degrees, which means that I'm actually writing this as density of water. It's incompressible, so the density is the same everywhere, so it's just density times cosine of 30 degrees times the average velocity at state 2 squared times a2. And 
this point, I know A2 in terms of diameter. I know rho, I know the cosine of 30 degrees, but I don't know the velocity at state 2. So I can rewrite the velocity at state 2 in terms of the velocity at state 1 because I know both cross-sectional areas by using our conservation of mass. So just like last time, it's going to simplify down to the velocity at state 1 times the area at state 1 is equal to the velocity at state 2 times the area at state 2. And just because I want to show it a little bit differently, I'm going to calculate that numerically and plug it in as opposed to doing what I normally do, which is calculating a value symbolically. Doesn't really matter. You do you. I'm going to say v bar 2, a2 is equal to v bar 1, a1. Therefore, v2 is equal to v bar 1 times the quantity a1 over a2. And that would be v bar 1 times pi over 4 times diameter 1 squared over pi over 4 times diameter 2 squared, which is equal to average velocity at state 1 times the proportion d1 over d2 squared. My velocity at state 1 is given as 6 feet per second. So if I were to take 6 multiplied by the proportion 3 over 1 squared, I would end up with 54. So my velocity at state 2 is 54 feet per second. And I'm going to make that a little bit bolder. Not because it's important, but just because when we refer to this later, I don't want to have to just scrub around the page going, where is it? I know I calculated it. I cannot find it. Oh no. 54. Okie doke. So then Rx. is going to be 1.937 slugs per cubic foot times cosine of 30 degrees times our velocity at state 2, which is 54 feet per second, and then I square everything. And then our area at state 2 is pi over 4 times the diameter at state 2, which I believe is 1 inch. Yep, 1 inch. And then I square everything. And I'm looking for a result in pounds. Yes, pounds of force. So I will start at my destination and work backwards. A pound of force is 1 slug times 1 feet per second squared. Slugs cancel slugs, second squared cancels second squared, and I have square feet times square inches in the numerator and cubic feet times feet in the denominator. So I need 12 inches in one foot. I square everything. One squared is boring. Feet squared and feet squared cancel feet and cubic feet. Square inches cancel square inches, leaving me with a result in pounds of force. So, calculator. You would help us out here. And that would be. Oh no! Screen went away. Okay, we made it through the void. So 1.1. 1. 1, come on, calculator. Not you too. 1.937 times the cosine of 30 degrees times 54 squared, it looks like I dropped a trilling parenthesis there, times 54 squared, times pi over 4, times 1 over 12 squared. And I get 43.25, oh no, pi over 4, why are you appearing there? What happened there? Oh, it's... Oh, is that a divide sign? I don't know what's happening to my calculator. It's all the calculator's fault. That's what's important. We get 26.67. 26.67 pounds of force. And you know what's going to happen next. Is that force on the nozzle to the left or to the right? 
Well, we calculated a reaction force, so the force required to hold the nozzle in place has to be to the right. We have to counteract the force on the nozzle by providing 26.68 pounds of force to the right. That means the actual force on the nozzle is to the left. So I'm going to say 26.67. The x component of force is force on nozzle. is to the left because the force required to hold the nozzle in place the reaction force is to the right and we know that because our rx value is to the right we got a positive value therefore the reaction force is to the right so one dimension down now we can do our y momentum equation and for that i will open up a new sheet And the y momentum equation is going to have the same general terms as our x momentum equation. The only real difference here is that we are talking about the y components of velocity, which we indicate with an italics v. Now, here's the thing. I know my handwriting is difficult to discern if I'm writing an italics v or not. So instead of writing an italics v, I'm basically going to be writing the Greek letter nu, and that's just to try to exaggerate it by writing it like this. So hopefully you guys are able to interpret what I'm trying to indicate here. New for our purposes here is just going to indicate the y component of velocity. I'm going to write fsy plus fby is equal to the integral of some stuff that isn't going to matter because of steady state. And that is Density times nu times dv plus the integral across our control surface of density times v times velocity vector dA. And then we can plug in and cancel terms. I'll get rid of my calculator here. I have a pressure at state one that is higher than atmospheric pressure, which means I have a gauge pressure, which is exerting a force on the control volume, which is going to appear in the negative direction because I'm defining my y axis as being up. Furthermore, I have a surface force in the form of Ry, which is up, so it's going to appear as a positive value. So my surface forces here are going to be Ry minus P1 times A1. And again, if you work the problem in gauge pressure, then I only have to care about state 1's pressure. If you were to try to model this with absolute pressure, you would have to account for the pressure at state 2 as well. And it's, again, really just the pressure difference that matters anyway. So because P2 is at atmospheric pressure, the difference between the two is gauge pressure. So P1A1 is the surface force that's relevant as a result of the pressure differential exerting a force on the control volume. Then we have body forces this time because we are talking about the y-axis and gravity is down in the y-axis, presumably. Actually, you know, just for good measure here, let's just say g is down. Now it's not just presumably, it's assumably. We have weight in the form of the weight on the nozzle itself. We also have the weight of the water in the nozzle, because we were told that the internal volume is 150 cubic inches. So I'm going to subtract the weight of our nozzle and I'm going to subtract the weight of our water. So that's everything on the left. For the right, I can get rid of our volume term because we are at steady state and we have two opportunities for water to cross the boundary in the y direction. That's at state one in the downward direction and state two in the downward direction as well. So I am going to write for my first integral here, I have the y component of velocity at state 1 times density, because they come out of the integral. And then I'm taking the integral of the velocity vector with respect to the area vector, which because of the uniform flow assumption is going to simplify down to a magnitude. So that's 
v bar 1 times a1, and do I make that a negative or not? Well, the area vector is going to be acting upward because it's always defined in the outward direction, and my velocity vector is in the downward direction, which means that they are in opposite directions, which, mean I, which means I add a negative. And then at state 2, I don't have quite enough room, so I will make a little bit of room here. So I'm going to write that as plus the y component of velocity at state 2 times the density at state 2 times, and again, okay, I'm just going to write this down the line. Hopefully that's not confusing. Then I'm going to bring out my velocity vector as a magnitude because we are assuming a compressible flow, perhaps that integral. And do I make that a negative or not? No, I do not because the velocity and area vectors are in the same direction. Now we can go through and consider these terms one by one. Ry is what we're looking for. P1 we know. A1 we can determine as a function of D1, which we know. The weight of the nozzle we know. The weight of the water we can calculate because we know the volume. So that would be the mass of the water times gravity, which is the volume of the water times density times gravity. Then the y component of velocity at state 1 is going to be negative v bar 1. You follow? Because the average velocity at state 1 is in the downward direction, which means the y component of velocity is a negative value. Because we define our y-axis as going up, this is going in the downward direction. And density 1 is the same as density. V bar 1 we know. A1 we can determine in terms of d1. The y component of velocity at state 2 we can describe relative to our 30 degree angle. So sine of 30 degrees is going to be y component of velocity divided by average velocity, which means this is going to be negative cosine of 30, excuse me, sine of 30, times v bar 2. Because again, that's in the downward direction. Density 2 is the same as density, and A2 we can determine as a function of diameter. So at this point, we have everything that we need, it's just a matter of plugging stuff in. So I'm going to do something dangerous. I'm going to try to solve for Ry and substitute in the same step. So we begin with P1, A1, and then we add our weight of our nozzle. And then we add density times volume of water times gravity. And then we subtract our, oh, excuse me. It's negative V bar one times negative V bar one, which is going to yield a positive quantity. Density times V bar one squared times pi over four times diameter 1 squared. And then in state 2, we only have one negative, so it doesn't cancel. So we're left with minus density times sine of 30 degrees times v bar 2 squared times pi over 4 times diameter 2 squared. And if we had left our v bar 2, symbolic, we could make that substitution now, and I'm sure we could write this in terms of all the diameters ever, but for now this is perhaps a little bit more straightforward. So P1 was given as 19.2 PSIG. And we are multiplying by A1, which is going to be pi over 4, times diameter 1 squared. I really should have made that substitution up here in order to be consistent with my other areas.
Diameter one was three inches. And then I square everything, and I'm looking for pounds of force and a PSI is a pound of force per square inch, which means I'm already in pounds of force. Then we add the weight of our nozzle, which was 10 pounds of force. Oops. Then density of water was 1.937 slugs per cubic foot. And then we multiply by our volume of water, which was 150 cubic inches, if I am not mistaken. And I am not mistaken. Then we multiply by gravity, which is presumably 32.2 feet per second squared. I guess I should add that to our assumption. Feet per second squared. And then I'm going to want that in pounds of force, so I will start at our destination and work backwards. A pound of force is one slug times one foot per second squared. Slugs cancel slugs. And then 12 inches are in one feet, and I cube everything. One cubed is boring. Second squared cancel second squared. Inches cubed cancel inches cubed. Feet and cubic feet cancel cubic feet and feet, leaving me with pounds of force. So next up is going to be the density of water times pi over 4 times the average velocity at state 1 times d1 squared. So 1.937 slugs per cubic foot times pi over 4 times velocity 1 squared, which was 6 feet per second. Yeah, 6 and then... 54. 6 feet per second, and then I square everything. And I multiply by the diameter at state 1, which was 3 inches. 3 squared inches squared. And I want pounds of force, so I will start at my destination and work backwards. Pound of force is a slug times a feet per second squared, and then 12 inches in 1 foot. I square everything. One squared is boring. Inches squared cancel inches squared. Second squared cancel second squared. Slugs cancel slugs. Feet and cubic feet cancel square feet and square feet, leaving me with pounds of force. And then we are subtracting what appears to be just a part of a row. It's weird. We are subtracting 1.937. And you know what? Just to be a little bit more efficient here, I'm going to copy and paste this line. Is like 80% of it is the same. Density times sine of 30 degrees. So I should gooch this all over to the right. Sine of 30 degrees times pi over 4 times the velocity is state 2 squared, which is 54. And then we are multiplying by the diameter at state 2 squared, which is 1. Yeah, that looks right. So density times sine of 30 times pi over 4 times velocity 2 squared times diameter at 2 squared. I will point out here that if you had plugged in the velocity at state 2 symbolically in terms of the velocity at state 1 and a bunch of diameters, it would probably be easier to factor out a bunch of stuff and write it in terms of a unit conversion that only occurs once with the ingress and egress point, but this works just as well. So now I can calculate for days. Calculator, you are needed. So I'm going to take 19.2 and then I'm going to multiply by pi over 4, which is going to be a theme in this calculation. I really wish there was a pi over 4 button on my calculator. Times 3 squared, and then we add to that quantity. 10, then we add to that quantity. 1.937 times 150 times 32.2, and then we multiply by 1 divided by 12 cubed. And then we add to that 1.937 times 
i over 4 times 6 squared times 3 squared times 1 over 12 squared. And then we subtract 1.937 times the sine of 30 degrees. My calculator is already in degrees. Times pi over 4 times 54 squared times 1 squared, which is boring, times 1 divided by 12 squared. Okay. It's 2 carats. That's entirely too many carats. And let me sanity check this calculation. 19.2 times 5 over 4 times 3 squared. Yep, plus 10 plus 1.937 times 150 times 32.2 times 1 over 12 cubed. Yep, plus 1.937 times 5 over 4 times 6 squared times 3 squared times 1 over 12 squared. And then we are subtracting 1.37. It's 1.937, not 1.37. Calculator. Made a mistake again. 937. Times sine of 30 times pi over 4 times 54 squared times 1 over 12 squared. I'm just going to double check that last term and make sure there's nothing. Doesn't seem quite right. Yep, looks good to me. So, our answer is going to be 139.15. And then it wants to know the direction. Again, for some nozzle is... We got an RY value that was positive, which implies that the reaction force is up. So in order to hold the nozzle in place, you have to supply a force in the upper direction of 139 pounds. Therefore, the actual force on the nozzle is going to be in the downward direction, or rather the force on the pipe. I guess that's what I really meant. The force on the pipe is downward. Meaning the pipe would be in tension. I will clarify that over here. It's not the force on the nozzle, it's the force on the pipe. That's what I meant. 